Infinite Craft is a free-to-play online game that just released a short while ago, and it has already grabbed people's attention thanks to the fact that you can make just about anything. No, literally, if it exists, then it can probably be crafted in Infinite Craft. And yes, this does include Pokemon, which got me thinking. Could I craft a six Pokemon in this game and use them to help me beat Pokemon Fire Red? Well, that's the question that we'll be answering today. Now, in order to maintain some difficulty during this playthrough, I won't be allowing myself to heal in battle, and the battle style must remain on set mode. However, this will not be a hardcore nuzzlocke or anything among that variety. Also, I've never played Infinite Craft before, so it's not very likely that I'll craft some strong team members in the first place. Anyways, without further ado, make sure to hit that sub button as it really helps out the channel, and let's see if I can create a future Hall of Fame team of Pokemon using Infinite Craft. Alright, so here we are on Infinite Craft. So we're given Water, Fire, Earth, and Wind to start off with. And, I don't know, just looking at the Earth, my first thought to get to Pokemon would be getting Japan and then combining it with, I don't know, something like video games maybe? What if I try to get Ocean, since Japan is an island, maybe I could do like mountain with ocean hey let's go all right so we're getting somewhere now now i need something like japan related to combine with island fish and fire gives us sushi wait could this work oh let's go baby all right so we got japan pretty easily now how in the world am i supposed to get video games mountain with fire gives us volcano wait hold up could i somehow get ash from this and then would the game recognize Ash as the character from Pokemon, or just a literal Ash from a volcano? Ooh, we get Crystal. Wait, could I do Pokemon Crystal with Japan? No, that's not gonna work. Okay, how about Pokemon Diamond with Japan? No! Fire with a gen makes Ruby. What about Pokemon Ruby with Japan? No, we're back to Samurai. Still haven't done Water with Earth yet. That gives us Plant. What if we do two plants on top of each other? We get Tree. Water and Tree gives us a river. I don't think I really need that. Fire and tree gives us ash. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we do ash with crystal? And would it recognize this as Pokemon? No, it's gonna give us diamond again. What about ash with diamond? No, we get coal. I mean, I can try ash with ruby. Oh, yo, we got it. Hey, okay. All right, so there we go. I've made six Pokemon. Now, I'm assuming... Whatever I combine with Pokemon is going to give me some sort of Pokemon, so I better be strategic about this. Okay, I can take fish. This will probably give me a water type. <sighs> that is, uh, that is not what I was going for. But Magikarp is our first team member. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I need something better with fire then. Let's go. Charizard? That's strong, I'll take it. Wind will maybe give us a flying type- No, it's literally gonna give us an airplane. What if I do flying with Pokemon then? We get Pidgey- Oh my gosh, this is not good. What about stone? This has to be a rock type. Eevee? Are you kidding? I mean, I have sand. Maybe this could be a ground or rock type? Okay, it's a sand true. We don't have an electric type yet, and I just got lightning, so here we go. We get Pikachu, of course. And there is a look at the six Pokemon that I will have to be using throughout this playthrough. As I said before, this isn't a hardcore Nuzlocke, but I'm not gonna be allowing myself to heal in battle and the battle style will still be on set mode, so this is going to be just about as difficult as a hardcore Nuzlocke. It's also a good time to mention that I'm not going to be evolving any of these mons either, so Charizard is really gonna have to carry this team. Anyways, I gave myself Sandshrew to start, since I'm playing Pokemon Fire Red, and Sandshrew is exclusive to Leaf Green. The first rival battle was a piece of cake, so after picking up Oak's parcel, it was time to add to the squad by catching Pikachu and Pidgey. These are the three main Pokemon that I'll be rocking out with for a while, so hopefully they don't disappoint. After a bit of training, I challenged Blue once again, only to sweep him with Pikachu. Hey, take in this moment, Pikachu because that's probably the only team sweep you'll get in this playthrough. As soon as I reached Pewter City, I went after Brock, but I couldn't even take down the gym trainer's Geodude. Yeah, beginning with an electric, flying, and ground type Pokemon that only knows normal type moves is not a good idea in Kanto. 
To make matters worse, looking at my upcoming level up moves, no one can really learn anything great. I guess my best bet is to get Sandshrew to level 17 for Poison Sting? Well, luckily, that worked out, as Pikachu and Pidgey chipped away at Geodude, while Sandshrew poisoned Onix and slowly whittled it down. Just before entering Mount Moon, I went ahead and purchased the $500 Magikarp, even though, let's be honest, I'm never gonna use this thing. It'll just be Death Fodder. The rival fight by Cerulean City wasn't difficult at all, as Pikachu once again took care of business, besides Sandshrew, who dealt with Rattata. Misty was a different story, though. Her Staryu didn't stand a chance, but even after paralyzing Starmie, it was easily able to KO Pikachu. Misty then went for Recover, and I tried to hang on by spamming Sand Attack, but eventually, my entire team got taken out. Fortunately though, on my fourth attempt, I got some better luck with Paralysis, so Sandrew managed to finish the job with Rock Tomb. Blue was yet again unable to put up much of a fight on the SSN, minus his Kadabra who did confuse Pidgey, but still went down. And because we momentarily turned into criminals by stealing the Dig TM back in Cerulean, Sandrew cleanly swept a Lieutenant Surge's team. Blue is slowly starting to learn how to become a better trainer, as his Execute did give us some trouble with Hypnosis and Leech Seed. Nonetheless, the rest of the fight in the Pokemon Tower was a piece of cake. Upon entering Celadon City, I made sure to grab Eevee. Once again, I'm not allowed to evolve any of my Mons, but I feel like Eevee can still put in some work. However, it was Sandshrew doing all the dirty work against Giovanni, as I taught him Brick Break, which made this battle relatively easy. As for Erika, it looked like I was gonna lose all the way until the very end. Pidgey knocked out Victory Bell and Tangela, but got paralyzed in the process. Because of that, I switched out into the rest of my team members, who hardly did a thing to Vileplume. I mean, Eevee did get a few hits off, but that was about it. Luckily though, Pidgey survived an Acid and finished off Vileplume with a Wing Attack. From there, it was right on to Koga, whose first coughing went down without a problem. However, Muck is a complete wall against my team. I sent out Sandshrew to use my super effective dig, but Koga always spams Acid Armor and Minimize. That combination renders this battle impossible for me right now, as he just sweeps through my team with Sludge. Even after taking out the trainers on the nearby routes, going through most of the Sylph Co, and gaining some levels, the result is still the same. Well, let's go try the other major fights, I guess. The rival battle in the Sylph Co was a little better, as Pikachu took care of Pidgeot, Growlithe, and Blastoise, while Pidgey dealt with Execute, and Eevee knocked out Alakazam. Giovanni wasn't any harder, as Sandshrew's dig really came in handy here. For Kangaskhan, though, I whittled away at it with Eevee. On the other hand, Sabrina was a little scary. Kadabra didn't put up much of a fight, but Mr. Mime managed to finish off Sandshrew and Pikachu. Eevee came in for the cleanup, while Pidgey KO'd Venomoth, before only landing one quick attack on Alakazam and dying. However, from that range, Eevee was able to land a return, giving us the fifth badge. With those battles out of the way, it was back to Koga, who got completely swept by Pikachu. Is Pikachu better than I thought it was? Nah, that can't be. Upon arrival on Cinnabar Island, I felt that it was right to finally add Charizard to the squad, considering that we were about to take on the Fire-type gym. Now, I forgot to record footage of Charizard's summary, so here's me dominating Blaine's team. Well, I say dominating, but he did take out a few of my mons. Hey, we made it out, that's all that matters. The final showdown with Giovanni wasn't much harder, as Sandshrew and Pidgey took care of his first Rhyhorn and Dugtrio, while Charizard swept through Giovanni's final three members. We then had no issues facing Blue on Route 22, as Pikachu, Sandshrew, and Eevee took care of his first three mons, while Charizard dealt with the second half of his team. As soon as I reached the Pokemon League, I headed straight into the Elite Four, which turned out to be an awful idea, as I didn't even come close to beating Lorelei. Almost having a full team of first stage Pokemon has definitely caught up to me, as Pikachu's super effective Thunderbolt doesn't even do half of Dugong's health. Let's get to level 60 and try again. Well, it seems like that was the mark, as Pikachu was finally able to dish out sufficient damage, while Eevee finished off Slowbro, and Charizard outlasted Lapras and Jinx. 
From that point, Bruno and Agatha were absolute cakewalks, believe it or not, so it was on to Lance. His Gyarados, Dragonairs, and Dragonite didn't really cause any problems, but Aerodactyl did manage to wipe out Charizard and Pidgey. It was only because I got off a Feather Dance on him that Pikachu was able to live two Asian powers and finish the job. So it was time to defeat Blue once and for all. He quickly switched in his Rhydon for Pidgeot, so I was forced to two sack off Pidgey in order to knock him out with Santru's Earthquake. Pikachu only got off a single Thunder on Blastoise before getting obliterated by a Hydro Pump, so I sent an Eevee who not only finished a Blastoise, but also hung on to defeat Pidgeot. Alakazam went down to Santru and Executor got burnt to a crisp, so it was now a 1v1 between Charizard and Arcanine. And I would have won this duel if it wasn't for Blue using a full restore and taking out Charizard. We were really one hit away, you've got to be kidding. And literally every attempt went that same exact way until finally at level 69 Charizard was just barely strong enough to survive with 15 HP and take out Arcanine. Well, that was a fun way to build a team and play through Pokemon Fire Red. It honestly made for a somewhat challenging adventure. Anyways, I had a ton of fun making this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much. For now though, have a great rest of your day, and until next time, deuces!